Hello everybody and we are back. The Premier League is back, the pain of following Tottenham is back and the Cads are back to discuss a game against Leicester which didn't really go the way we wanted. Uh, we're here to talk about it with Charlie, David, Ashley and of course we're here with A. So uh, until things come up and things go wrong, which is guaranteed to happen because I'm currently on holiday and working off my laptop, we will go from there. Hello everybody, let's get started. Charlie, how you doing? Uh, surprisingly well, to be honest. <laughs> surprisingly happy. <laughs> David, how are you? <laughs> Excellent. Just back from three and a half weeks of holiday all over France and the UK. I was, I was doing great until about the 56th minute last night. Ashley? Yeah, same thing. Although, as I said earlier, I was pleasantly distracted by Lefroy and a, a lovely lady named Verity while I was trying to watch the game. Yeah. If Verity's what if Verity's watching, um yeah. pop on she's gonna be blushing. Jump right on now. right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm going good. All good, yes. Surprisingly good, as Charlie said. But you look uh, great, yeah. eh? new season. New season. <laughs> concise. <laughs> You're looking, looking strong, concise, buddy. eh? <laughs> looking strong. Bold. <laughs> Singular, determined. Capital. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Okay. So let's talk football again. Why do we always keep? We want to avoid talking about football. Certainly after the Bayern Munich games, we've anything but the football. But we're here. The, the Premier League has started. Um, I don't think it was a result any of us wanted. Uh, Jamie Vardy getting the goal and trying to rub their noses in it, but. There were positives and there were negatives. Who wants to start with some positives? Uh, David, come on, you're such a positive go-getter. Let's see what oh, you've got. Oh, okay then. Yeah, um, here's a positive. Um, Madison looked quite sharp, I thought. Um, okay, so... that's enough from you, David. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that Any more? Sharp, the first time. <laughs> low, it's a low bar these days, unfortunately. Yeah, it's Gosh. a low bar. I mean, it's hard to be positive now we've lost Skip. You know, I, I, just, I don't know if I have anything positive to say about Tottenham anymore. It's just my heart's broken. So Smiley happy Skip yeah. has gone. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I think I think uh, Madison is about the only positive thing from uh, from last night, isn't it? Oh, no, there's plenty um, more positives beyond oh, is there? that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I, let's, I know, see, let's see if I Ashley can come up with one. Myself. Yeah, Ashley, go on. Um, I thought Van der Ven looked lo terrific. Um, Paro, not sorry, Paro, uh, Udaji. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, there was some good, there was, there was some good stuff. And, uh, I, I sense there's a lot of negative on social media. So I sort of avoided it. Um, I've been a fan for so long. I'm going, gee, I've been here before and there's only 37 games to go. So I'm in for the long haul. I love Spurs, you know? Yeah. It might be in pear shape, but. What can I say? I love Spurs, and it, it's it's good to see them a new season start and bring it on. I'm not sure whether I should be breaking it to you or just informing you we have another 47 games to go because we've got at least eight European games, Premier League and about, FA Cup. Premier League, uh, Premier, yeah, Premier League, FA Cup, League Cup, all of those. Um, so, yeah, there's uh, lots more the enjoyment League, to come in the season. Pain? I don't know. Uh, a, what did you think was positive about last night? Yeah, I think the first half was awesome, except for putting the ball in the net. Um, the second half wasn't great, but I thought after the injury to Benton Court, the new guys uh, grabbed a hold of it and... Um, you know, stop the Leicester tide, and uh, mm -hmm. there are lots of positives. I think uh, style of play didn't change when we brought the subs on, which was something we struggled with last year. It almost looks like uh, better fit to play than they want to, the way they want to. Um, yeah, Poro was good. Madison was good. Solanke was uh, encouraging, provided a focal point. He works hard, good in the air. Uh, another day, he could have had a couple of goals. Uh, how often have you seen those glanced headers like that just go either side of the keeper? Uh, lots to work on. Um, but o overall, um, yeah, a decent display. Um, yeah, um, you know, we didn't, we conceded a sloppy goal much like we did last year, but the game should have been put to bed by then. And um, 
I think that's what I'm trying to hang on to right now. You know, we get better in that final third, and when when we dominate the opposition like that, we should take advantage of it, and maybe we wouldn't wouldn't have the situation you we found ourselves in uh, yesterday and after 56 minutes. I think the Leicester fans will be looking at it and saying we should have won because they had the chances. They certainly had a decent second chance to. For, for Jamie Vardy to get another goal. And I, I, I suspect they're happy to go away with the draw, but they could certainly have won that game with a little bit more composure from Jamie Vardy. Well, we oh, no, we definitely should have. I mean, we... we Vardy uh, had another one, we had six or seven, so no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were the better I side, I think, overall. Yeah, well, I felt like there's an awful lot of um, same problems as last season, last night, but I'm not going to get carried away. It's the first match. I don't think I don't think our preseason was um, of the standard needed to get us ready for the first mm. match. Um, there were too many players that looked gassed after the first half, and mm. that to me points to a not really a satisfactory um, preparation. Yeah, uh, you know, Bentico even before he he got um, knocked out, he looked dead on his feet, um, and I thought Sar looked really leggy and Madison. Um, and I th that, that surprises me a bit on the 50th minute that we were already saying we're cooked. I just don't think that, I don't, don't think that's a, I think we didn't have a very good preseason. Okay. We are, we are straying dangerously into ter territory of talking about negatives there. We haven't even gone to Charlie for his positives yet. So what Sorry, have you got for Charlie. us, Charlie? Uh... <laughs> the pause, the pause. <laughs> <laughs> the pause. Long I would say uh, <laughs> the man's a Hollywood say, actor and, and knows the <laughs> knows the power of screen time. <laughs> and there's a pause of deathly silence. <laughs> it's the, it's the negative space, not to get negative. Though, but um, I positively, I mean, I was looking at the first half and I'm like, well, it's just the finishing that's just missing right now. We look a completely entirely more a whole unit it felt like every player had a player on the bench ready to come on for them i felt like there was a sense that any anyone on that pitch could have been replaced at any point and i feel like everybody was sort of playing for their place a little bit which i think is probably one of the bigger things that they've been working on in terms of recruitment which is getting out almost was it 10 players or something <clears throat> something like that that yeah. we would we would consider dead weight over the over the um closed season you, you have to look at that as a positive. I mean, the performance aside, yes, you can call it typical Tottenham. You, you can take it to pieces. Um, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think um, it, it wasn't a recognisable Tottenham performance um, in the sense that we were, we were 1-0 up at half time. We're usually 1-0 down. We usually come out, you know, with a barnstorming five, 10 minutes in the second half, can score one, two, three goals, uh, bring Johnson off the bench. I mean, everything was kind of backwards for me. I, in terms of the game itself and, you know, um, taking it in isolation as, as a Spurs performance, I, there really wasn't that much wrong with it. And um, apart from putting the ball in the back of the net, if we were two or three and a lot by the time Jamie Vardy headed that into the back of the net, no one would be talking about mm. right now the fact that we, <clears throat> that we, that, 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 that it was a Spursy performance. Everyone's saying it's a Spursy performance. And I'm like, well, you know, I remember the time back in Pochettino's era when, we would put away those chances. You'd have Harry Kane, Deli Ali, and everyone up front just putting away these chances. We'd be four and a lot before the time, before the 60th minute, and everyone would be happy. Um, I don't like this idea that everyone's calling it a Spursy performance because it's sort of sitting into a, a very negative uh, place when quite clearly we're on a, a project. And I think the, the 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 worst thing that's happened in the past, you know, 24, 72 hours, uh, 48, 72 hours, is is that Pochettino? Uh, is that Ange Postecoglou's come out and said that you know he usually wins something in his second season? I, I feel like this is a longer project, and I don't think that was necessarily advisable because that would just come back to bite him in the ass. But for me, it was a project performance. Yes, we weren't great uh, uh, in in terms of the scoreline, but I, apart from putting the ball in the back of the net, I I, I thought that was a fantastic uh, first showing. Uh, especially in the first half. Yes, the second half was leggy. I thought the subs came on, they played really well. Um, again, it's just it's just being sharp, and I think we'll get that game time to get sharper this year. 
Excellent. Well, right now we've just been joined by a debutante. Hello, Sam. How are you doing? Hey, Sam. Uh, no sound. No sound. <laughs> newbie. 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 <laughs> Fire him there. Fire him. Sam's a, uh, no, Sam no, is no, a no, long time no, long time member of Coys uh, Cads Cads a long time yeah. member of Cads he's been with us a long time uh, known him personally as well for quite some time no and, sound uh, Sam you have been yeah, dubbed no sound Sam but he will be he will be giving us his positives very soon uh, on my side I thought Bergval played very well I thought Gray came in the debutants generally gave a, a yeah. good performance. Um, I've seen a little bit of st stick towards uh, Solanke, but I thought he actually came in, worked really hard, closed people down, pressed the way that we wanted him to. Still no sound, Sam. Um, and uh, basically did much of what we wanted to, except get the ball in the net. He had two or three good chances. One of them, people saying, oh, he should have put away. It was like bashed straight at his ankles, effectively. I didn't think there was almost any chance of getting that one in. Um, but yeah, there was a, there, I thought there were positives. We're going to switch to negatives now. And my immediate negative is something that's been bugging me for a long time with Spurs. And it goes back way before Postacoglu, probably back to Nuno. When things start to go wrong for us, our heads drop. And it takes a, like another almost shock to, to get us out of that funk. It can last 10, 15 minutes. And when Leicester scored their first goal yesterday, you could almost see the drop in performance. Leicester suddenly saw, oh, there's a chance here. We can go and get something. And the Spurs players were like, oh, we're not going to up our game. They just didn't. And that, was for me, was a real disappointment. Can I just come in there just real quick? Sorry, uh, uh, everyone was trying to talk there. Um, but, um, Stu, someone said this on uh, another podcast uh, that won't be named yesterday. And they were like, this is who we are, and that's the way we always do it. And I, I have to ask, when you say we, our heads dropped, is that a collective club mentality? Is that a collective crowd club? Oh, here we go. This is typical Tottenham kind of uh, way of thinking. Or do you think it is the players? Do you think it's the players that incite that? Or do you think it comes through the whole entire sort of consciousness of the club and our heads drop and we're like oh here we go again kind of thing i, I think there's got to be something in the club it's got to be something there that's continuing to pervade this this sense of thinking because we've had such a large turnover of players in the last couple of years last three years we've almost there's only two players that are within still in the squad from before um everyone else has, has changed over effectively so where is this coming from it's not coming from Ange. You know, and we know is a is a positive thinker. We know he's looking towards the best, and that he wants people to get get on with the job effectively. Um, and I just don't understand how we haven't kicked this yet because we've got a group of seemingly ambitious players who seem to have their heads screwed on right. But it happens far too regularly now for it to be a coincidence. So, but I don't agree that this is something that's that we've always been like. This is this fragility we get. We get a goal against us and the players fall to pieces. Like, I mean, when I was at the Nottingham Forest match and they scored, there was about 10 minutes where I thought they're going to get a second and they're going to get a yeah. third. We were that bad. The wheels fall off when we get a goal. It's the players. And I also, I don't think that is something that is historically, that's not for me what Spursy is. And under Poch, even under Conte and even under Mourinho, I can think of loads of examples where we've been, where we've gone and go down and we've improved and we've picked it up. It's it's really something that really came through last season. And I don't think it's Ange. I think it's the lack of a leader. And I think we were saying this at the end of the last season, that we need a leader on the pitch. And I still don't think we have one. Don't, we haven't, I mean, we've just been, we're, I mean, we've just spent, I don't know how many million and we put out, 10 out of 11 of those players that started with the same ones that were starting last season. We've only got mm -hmm. one new player in. So there's no change in leadership on the pitch. So there's not going to be no change in the behaviour when we go a goal down. So you're blaming Sonny? Yeah. Uh, Sonny, Madison, Sonny, Madison, perhaps even QT a little bit. Yeah. And, and Charlie and Dave, this goes back to last season when we were talking about guys like Cootie stepping up. I actually mm -hmm. believe he can be that on-field leader 
and we need that. And I don't believe we've had it. Harry, great player as he was, wasn't really that guy when our heads get low. Sonny is not that guy. And I do believe if it's part of a bigger thing, but this particular part on field, there is on field leadership. Somebody to, you know, Dave Mackay, grab us by that. Steve Perryman. Gary know, Mabbott. I'm sure to get back yeah. into, it, you know, that we don't. Good, good point, Dave. And Charlie, it's what we were talking about last Ashton, week. can I just ask you, uh, so take the top three teams or top, top two teams. Who are those players for those teams Rod, then? Rod, Rodri, it used to be Gundogan, Rodri, Odegaard for those top two teams. Definitely, you know. Uh -huh. Leaders so, and grab Odegaard. Here. You think Odegaard is that guy? I Yeah. for the I don't watch Arsenal all the time. But when I do watch him, I go, oh, man, he's that guy. And then Rodri, see, I don't see. Sorry, Ashley, I don't see those individual, independent things anymore. I see it as a consciousness in the in the team that sort of, yeah, maybe there's one player that sort of, you know, you would see it, but I don't see them anyone sort of grabbing shirts anymore. I don't feel like it's that necessarily. That's that's what it is. It feels like to me to be more of a sort of consciousness within the team that sort of grabs itself and and takes it forward. I, I never see. You know those 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 big sort of powerful you know flat nosed characters anymore that 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 would that would well, I, literally I, 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 throw in a tackle and everyone would get crazy. No, I don't even mean flat nose and and, and a physically aspect of it. But look mm. at Rod, or look look at uh, De Bruyne. Those guys lead often. They lead by example, and they keep their heads up all the time. And the winning teams do that. Mod Madrid to Real Madrid, you know. Guys that keep their heads up, I think we are lacking it. And Sonny's not the guy. He's definitely not not the guy to do that. And we're stuck with him for the season. You know. Well, that's He's okay. Not... I mean, you can have a lead. I mean, for all those years that Hugo was our captain, I mean, he he wasn't a leader on the pitch. So I'm assuming yeah. other people were leading. Um, well, I mean, it it I mean, doesn't have. It just doesn't have to be the nominate, the named captain that has to do the. What you know, what right. you said, Charlie, sort of like grab grab the shirt or put in a massive tackle and say, Come on, we're not going out like this. You know, put yourselves together. Mm. We need need someone to do that. Um, Can I come in here? Go ahead, um, please. Yeah. Goals change games. Every every team you watch, when they concede, they're under the cosh. But this is where I agree with with, with David, is that it's certain players that <laughs> get you out of that rut to yeah. resist what's happening to pull you out of it and um or, or it's a collective you, you're right it doesn't need to be one person but that's what's not there for us so whether it's team or person it's that collective will to to change the flow of the game or to resist the opposition in their good moments so that we can come back what we need is more spring box in the side yeah that's what we need <laughs> Who's that? Shouldn't, who's that? Who's that? shouldn't our who's that? World Cup winning, our Copa America winning captain or Copa America winning defender Cootie be that guy? I mean, he's vice captain in the side. Oh, um, I, he's given a lot come. of responsibility. He stepped up a lot over the last year. Um, but shouldn't he be that guy who's like trying to make something and, and be a little Stu, bit more I vocal? Think, I think what Ace trying to say is that we need Kelise at number six. <laughs> 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 Crazy. yeah he, he could do it um look uh i agree with you there uh Stuart. um i think um it, mentally and physically they tied together and mm -hmm. i think david said this earlier i'm agreeing with david a lot these guys were undercooked uh yeah. Bentico, um udagi romero van de ven were undercooked and it's no surprise that they were maybe mentally fatigued as well as physically fatigued in that second half and they were unable to, to get a grip of the game. And I think as they come up to fitness, they will. They had 45 minutes in preseason. And I know they played copper and stuff, but they had big breaks in between. Um, so I, I see it. Um, I'll be worried if it continues into next two, three games because you're never going to dominate the game completely. It's always, there's always an ebb and flow and the other team's always going to have um, some time to, to assert themselves. So um, for me, 
Uh, yeah, it's good. Good pick up on this. And this is something that we really need to address, and it's probably the the biggest thing that we we need to 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 get to grips with. Um, in the first half, a lot of their one two passes when they did get the ball didn't amount to anything. In the second half, we're just a little bit a little bit slower uh, to react, and it was just one and two passes, and it was deja vu all over again last season. So um, hopefully that's something they're working on in the background. So if we're going to address this with transfers, I mean, there's only, as far as I can see, there's only one position left in the squad that's really up for debate, isn't there? I mean, right wing seems to be solved. Up front seems to be solved. Um, left wing with Sonny Vare, with Mikey Moore waiting in the wings and Timo Werner, I don't think that's going to get uh, attacked anytime soon. So it's literally the number six position, isn't it? Well. Wow. I agree, but I, ju I just like to like take advantage of that mention of the wings to say that our wingers were absolute bollocks last night. Sonny was poor. Werner was was frankly risible. Um, really, Werner was really really bad when he came on. Yeah, Werner didn't. I, don't, do I well. didn't think didn't feel like Brendan Johnson had much of an impact on the game all the way through. I thought that was a weak part of even in the first half. I thought we were weak. From the wings second half we were very weak um even though i thought we were good you know making some good like attacking moves and things um what came from the wings was not up to up to standard for me i thought sunny started well i thought he started the game well and i thought he faded later on i thought it was the right time to take him off he went off very late 85th minute wasn't it uh before that wasn't it he came on just after the Richardson came on for him, didn't he? No, no, no. Richardson right, right, came yeah. on later. Um, well, he was. That's my point. Yeah, uh, Brennan Johnson. I think we've still got issues there. Uh, there's there's a talented player waiting <laughs> to break out. I just don't know whether that player is going to break out at Tottenham. It just seems to be taking a little bit too long. There was one point yesterday where he got the ball in loads of space and he slowed down. And waited and like, what are you doing? There's space there to attack. Just go for it. And then fell over. And then fell over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sam, well, are you I with mean... us yet? No. no, you're not with us yet. Okay. <laughs> Sam, sorry, dude. Well, I mean, look, here's, the, here's the thing with Brennan Johnson. It's like he's starting in front of essentially, it looks like he's starting in front of Kurosevsky there, you know, and, um, the only reason that can possibly be is because he fits Sand's system better than Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky had a great preseason at basically false 9-10. Yeah. You've got Slanky coming in. Kulisevsky's our best player. He's our best player in front of the defense. Um, the most skillful. It, you, the, if you can't find a place for Kulisevsky in the team, you know, that you've got a big problem. Um, and I think, and I, I've said this before, you know, you have to make a decision with this player. You can't, if he, if he doesn't fit the system, he doesn't play on the right, um, then he has to play somewhere in between 10 and that false nine. Mm -hmm. And um, he's too good to leave on the bench. He, he's not, I don't think he's a great impact sub. I think he's great from the start. I think the better impact sub is actually Brennan Johnson. He's always been notorious as a, as a impact substitute. So I imagine when Oliver finally gets his green card or whatever he needs, that he uh, will go straight into that um, that slot because he is that tricky winner, winger that we, you know, that we we have been um, looking for. Uh, but the thing with Kulisevsky is, is a real conundrum. It, for me, it's like, if he's not going to play in front of Madison, which I think, you know, I, I as a, as you guys know, I I think that number ten is our is our problem position. I and I I didn't see any evidence of it last night being any better than that. I I think Madison played okay. I don't think he necessarily knows what he's doing in this Spurs team. Um, he's always seems to be just running around, literally chasing his tail a little bit and providing the odd little trick here and there, which reminds us of how good he is. But there was no incisiveness. There was very few shots from what I remember and link up play it just didn't it just doesn't seem to me like we have a strong presence in that in that in that area who can take the shot when we need to take the shot and not dribble the ball into the back of the net like we've been trying to do for the past few games 
it seems to me like the, the, the team is trying to play the Ange way and score the best Ange goal they can possibly score. No one's taking it upon themselves to take a, you know, take a pop shot, apart from Pedro Porro, really, who seems to be our main goal threat right now, which is quite worrying. It's um, worrying our inverted yeah, right true. wing back, yeah. Why is Kulisevsky on the bench? I, 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 I completely agree with you. I, I, but I personally think he should be playing as that false nine because I think it works really well. <clears throat> Um, I think it worked really well in preseason. We saw it at the yep. end of last season as well, playing that false nine. He's really good. He's much too good to be on the bench. Okay, so me and Charlie, we don't agree about Madison. Fair enough, but um, but I, we certainly agree that Kulu just should not should not be on the bench. He should be on the pitch. On the Dave, pitch, if a, Dave. If he's a false nine, then then who does who does he replace? So thank you. Oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> Dave, just wielding just, just the spent axe. fifty-seven million pounds on him, but we'll we'll, <laughs> well, okay, we'll yeah, dump him to the bench. The don't, I don't know why we signed him. Well, um, it, it's like Harland. He's ha he's our Harland, if you like. I mean, I hate to put them in the same bracket, yeah. but like he's a Halfland <laughs> at best. <laughs> oh that my was quick. god, that was quick. That was good. That was That's good, very good. That was good. Yeah, that was brilliant. Um. I, I thought Solanke did well yesterday, I have to say. Apart from apart from not getting the rubber to green and getting a goal, I thought his his play was very good. He linked up well with everyone. Um, his pressing was very good. We haven't seen pressing like that in quite some time. Um, yeah. But I really, really like seeing Kudasevsky in that role, that kind of hybrid role at the, in pre-season. I was hoping to see more of it. But maybe that's not going to happen now. We'll see. Yeah. But I thought Kudasevsky in this game where they were likely to drop back and we'd need a bit more technical ability than Brennan Johnson is able to give, I was surprised that Kudasevsky was, was dropped effectively for someone who'd been in such great form in pre-season. Do would, if, 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 <coughs> if Salah in, would you have put him on the right instead of Johnson? For me, Kulu would be on the right in the, at the moment, yeah. I think you buy, you spend that kind of money on a, a centre forward, you've got, you've got to play him and let him let him make his chance and take his chance. But, you know, um, Andrew's shown he's not afraid to throw people in when he feels they're right, and he's not afraid to hold people back when he feels they're not quite there yet. Yeah. I mean, I'd just, I'd like to clarify, I'm not against Solanke, and I, yeah. I agree, I didn't think he was, he wasn't poor last night by any stretch of his imagination. I thought he, like you said, he did a lot of pressing, got into a lot of good mm -hmm. positions, and I think uh, it was A that said like a couple of those headers could have gone either side of the keeper in another match and it would have been a goal. And that's absolutely fine. Perhaps I wouldn't even have been talking about Kudos as false nine, but I, I said it before the match. I said it, you know, all through preseason when we signed him and I kind of went, okay, great. But why? You know. Anyway, yeah, I mean, but... when it, everyone was talking about signing him, he wasn't in the immediate play that came to mind when it was like Spurs number nine. Um, now he's with us. Absolutely, dig. I'm going to give the guy the chance to Me too. to show that he's he's got the ability to do it. And I think yesterday showed us he's got something about him. Um, I just didn't remember him really giving our defenders a hard time when we played them. So, yeah. Well, that's because we'll he's only ever had one good season, right? Yeah. Hey, hey Sam's on the audio. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he's had two good Sam. seasons, but only one good season in the Premier League. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a, it's a it's a shitload of money we spent on him. Um, personally, Sam I comes in he's... and swears straight away. The boy has cads in his soul. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> we should definitely get a swear box going. In. <laughs> he, I mean, he's probably a minor improvement on peak Richarlison. When Richarlison is fit, right? So emphasis on the fact that Richarlison is regularly injured. But yeah, I mean, when you think that we spent like sixty-five million on him and like almost sixty million on Richarlison, that's a lot of money spent on a number nine that we don't. I don't think anyone feels like a hundred percent confident in for the time being. And again, I'm I I agree with you. Let's we'll give him time and see how he does. And I'm 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 sure. I mean, playing for Spurs. He should be scoring at least 15 Premier League goals and probably 20 goals in all competitions because we do create a lot of chances, even though we fail to score most of the chances. But yeah, it is 
it is a lot of money, and hopefully he can he can score next weekend against Everton because then we have a tough run of fixtures coming up. Yeah, Everton up next on Saturday, um, which should be interesting considering they've got their own problems and have started the season worse than us even. So, yeah, that will be a fun one. Um, and, of course, we'll be here the following day to talk about that match. Um, but we've still got time in the transfer window. Um, let's talk about some transfers. Skippy has left. I'm sad about that myself. I was kind. I, I like Skippy. I think Skippy's a great player. He's got... He's got something about him. No, he's not the best player in the world, but he has that ability to pull something out the locker every so often. He's got a really nice pass in him. He puts in, he leaves everything on the pitch. You know, you never look at him and go, he's someone who's slacking or hasn't put the work in today. He always puts the work in. And mm. I, I personally, I appreciate that as a fan. Um, I think he probably embodies what many of us fans would like to, kind of like we'd like to see ourselves out on that pitch and he kind of embodies that but just with plenty more ability and talent than I've ever got so <laughs> um, but at the same time 25 million up front 5 million in add-ons I mean that's a good Incredible. deal for Skippy isn't it Incredible uh, deal. yeah it's a great yeah. deal and he was never going to get match time you know mm. for all that I love him there's like yeah. at least four players ahead of him in the pecking order you know? <laughs> I mean when you spend 40 million on Gray that de facto is telling Skip that he's yeah, basically bye -bye. fourth choice. He's yeah. not going to be playing at all. And yeah. even though, yeah, I mean, he's homegrown. We love him. But I think we were all deep down probably knew that he wasn't quite good enough for where we want to be. If where we want to be mm -hmm. is a yeah. top four club and regularly challenging for titles. I mean, I think he's a perfectly decent squad player, but yeah. we probably don't need him if we've already got Ben Tancur, Bissouma, Gray that can play in, in his position. So... Yeah, it's good. It's good money, and it's it's it will be great for him if that means he gets regular um, playing time. And yeah. I think he'll have a end up having a very good Premier League career. I'd, I'd say watching the game yesterday, I was looking at their side, and I was going, "Why have Leicester signed him? They've Leicester have got good players. Leicester don't actually yeah. need to have a central midfielder. They've got Buonanotte, who I thought was very good last night. Um, Winks, and we all know the quality that Winks got, and Gen genuinely I'd put Winks above Skip um, they've got Ndidi who I think was playing at centre back yesterday for large portions he's you know all energy midfielder yeah yeah. Well, I think that was the Leicester, the Leicester fans have said yeah. great why, why have we signed him why have we signed, yeah. they need players at defence they, they need another centre forward why have they, they, they need signed centre forward why have they signed another midfielder for big money when they've got I'll money ask issues too many themselves? questions. Just take the money. Who, who, <laughs> just take the yeah, money. Who gives a shit? <laughs> well, I, was, I, was kind of, I, I was kind of looking forward to having Good another point, team to, to encourage this season, not not support and cheer on, but just, just be, have an interest in. I was looking forward to seeing that Winks and skip midfield. And then Jamie Vardy comes in and just is, does a Jamie Vardy type thing. I was like, no, nah, I can't support. I can't, can't follow them. Because they're full of something, a word I, even I'm not going to say on here. David might. Um, and I'm not going to say it. I'm not <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's obviously something that there's obviously a lot of um, uh, owners been put on the youth in, in preseason. And it's allowed, I think, people like Skip to move on because he's no better than what we have in the youth. And he's not young anymore. He's... He's sort of, um, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's been around the block. He, he, he isn't going to take it to the next level and he's not good enough for Tottenham. I mean, you may like him. He looks very likable. I mean, look, mm -hmm. what are we, what are we building here? Like, you know, I, I would rather have a, you know, take a pit, a punt on someone like a Jamie Donnelly, even though he's gone to the Orient, uh, over the course of a season and have like a, a journeyman like Skip. Uh, I just I feel like in general this second season is is, is a really interesting season, I, and that's why I, I'm baffled by the fact that Ange Postecoglou has come out and he's and he said that usually he wins something his second season, and it didn't even sound tongue in cheek to me. It sounded like mm -hmm. you know it was a soundbite that he grabbed hold of from a previous reporter who'd mentioned it, and he sort of ran with it a little bit, almost like as something as a deflector for the early season pressure. Like usually mm. I win something and we're in four competitions. So, you know, we got a good chance this season. I genuinely do think we got a good chance this season of win winning, yeah. winning well, something, but it does, it still feels to me like it, this, this second season, we shouldn't really have that much expectation on it because we've got 10 players have left 10 fairly senior players. We've got, you know, six or seven very, very young players coming in. There isn't really a, I mean, 
I think it's I think he's a great coach to take these guys forward. And it reminds me a lot of the early Pochettino days when you have people like, you know, you had a quite a young team coming through there. And so I I I mean I take yesterday's match with a grain of salt out of context, of course, yeah, we we're all disappointed. But you know, over the course of the season, if you if if you fast forward to what we'll look like next uh preseason and, and, that, and that sounds like a horrible thing to say because we all want success right just now. started the season charlie I know, <laughs> you're already I know, looking forward I know. to next season <laughs> i know but i have to you have to because everybody is losing their marbles right now about how we've drawn to leicester away a newly re- uh, pr- uh promoted team mm-hmm. you know um I, 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 it's it's not worst result in the world. We'd have to play Leicester away at some point in the season. And if we were going through a bad patch, we might look at that game and we'll go out to tricky fixture. Leicester on a roll, they're, 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 they've got relegation coming up and all this kind of stuff. That might be the tricky fixture, you know, three quarters of the way through the season. We, we drew, who cares? And I think that the, 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 for me, the most important thing was that, that, that those players coming off the bench, we had a very, very strong bench coming up, you know, coming on. Spence, you know, Bergvall, you know, uh, Archie Gray, uh, Kudelsevsky somehow. And um, I think we I think we look good. We look strong. We look solid. Um, there's no Deadwood. Skip's gone. That's great. Hopefully, Lo Celso follows him, you know. There's still a little uh, bit of get... Deadwood. There's, de- there's Lo Celso, yeah. Reggion. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. But they're not I even on the back. Alfie Whiteman. Guys, you know? Yeah. Um, so, we've still got... We've, I mean, we've got rid of 10 players, I think. We've got another four to go, I think, before this squad is really looking at its proper strength um one thing skip going does mean is that we we ain't going to fill out our europa league squad we're definitely going to be short on numbers for that because we don't have enough homegrown players homegrown at club players so i mean is it would it have been better to keep him on in the chance that we may need him and fill out the squad or but no, I just don't think there's still, any still, yeah him. We've moved on from the skip. We've moved on from Stuart. the skip type. <laughs> <laughs> Skip's gone. Deal with it, Stu. Live with it. <laughs> okay. No, but one thing I would say, Charlie, uh, in terms of expectations for this season, I mean, when you look at the way we exited the League Cup last year in the first round and the FA Cup in the second round, the fact that this season we're in the Europa League, which is probably a slightly easier competition, even though we're usually pretty poor in Europe, apart from 2019. Um, I don't know. I think there has to be some sort of expectation that we try to go and have a good cup run in at least one of those competitions. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I agree that it's still a transition season. I mean, I definitely think we should be targeting something. Again, not based on last night's performance or even pre-season's performance, but just the fact that we're in an easier competition and the fact that we did so poorly last year. I think we need to have a good cup run. Sam, are you saying you'd rather take a cup over long-term growth? I mean, I think you can do this. You can do. You can do those two things at the same time. Right. Like what? What yeah. long-term growth? I mean, like we've got so many games that all of these young, talented players that we've signed are going to get a load of game time anyway mm-hmm. in in Europe or in the cups. And I'd like mm-hmm. to think, you know, with the format of the new European competition, at least like. We should be able to. I mean, you can afford to lose one or two games and still get through. I mean, I think mm-hmm. they're only eliminating like eight teams out of thirty-two or whatever. I can't remember what the mm-hmm. exact format is, but there should be a lot of opportunity for our young players and to sort of bed them in. Yeah, I think that the one thing I'm saying is like I, I noticed the growth in the team, regardless of the result yesterday, and it will take it may take a season to get all that blooded in. We've got two. We've got two, I think we've got two, behind the, the attack, we've got two good teams. We've got two solid versions of the midfield. We've got, mm-hmm. you know, in defence, we've got largely, two, you know, some good backup there as well. So um, to, to blood that in, they will get the opportunity, but I'm confident in the bench now. I'm confident that you'd start like Archie Gray and Bergvall and they'll do a good job, do a good job for us. And then you have senior players coming on in the second half. Um to, to, I still to, think to we have a massive well. issue on the wings, and and that's what Stuart was sort of alluding to earlier, and when 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 you were talking mm-hmm. about transfers. But I mean, I think you mentioned Son, Solomon, you know, Werner, Johnson, Odebert. I mean, I've got no idea what his level is because, to be honest, I'd never heard of him <laughs> before last week when we signed him. But I mean, which one of those wingers? 
truly works in this system. I mean, I just it just doesn't work for me. None of them, I think, are good enough. So that that to me is a big issue, and I don't think we're going to go out and buy another winger now. It's too late. I mean, the 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 names we were after, they the, I mean, the top the sort of top level ones, they didn't want to come to us. We weren't able to get them in, so we've gone out and signed this guy from mm -hmm. from Burnley. I've got no idea if he's good enough, but for me, Johnson just isn't working. Kulusevski is on on the right wing. I love Kulusevski, but I'm not sure he's up to it. Son. Everyone loves Sonny, but is he really a left winger? It doesn't. He, he just doesn't doesn't seem to work for him in this system. And then, okay, we've got Mikey Moore, who's super promising and coming, you know, up and coming, but he's probably not really years yet. Seventeen old. <laughs> yeah, barely, barely. So I, don't, I, I really think we have an issue on. Yeah, I really think we have an issue on on the wings. I don't think any of us. We've got a lot of good players, and they're very good players, maybe in different systems and mm -hmm. under different coaches. But I'm not really sure that they fit Ange's system today. I don't. Know I, what you I don't just don't. About I just don't see us spending big money on the wings right now. We've got. No, absolutely. We've got it's so many now. players. No, no, there. We're not sign, yeah. yeah, we're, we're oh. not going to sign anyone now. I absolutely agree. But I, I, I do think that's an issue to how our squad has been built. But for me, Brennan Johnson yeah. was bought as like an impact sub, and it was the thing that Postecoglou was saying is like, oh, he's been brought into sub, he's been brought in to be be our impact player, be our impact sub, and it's a lot of money to spend on an impact sub, and well, now yeah, we've just bought I mean, a nineteen-year-old yeah, to effectively start. So it's it's a lot of money, and like Kulusevski was our best player in preseason. Why wasn't he starting yesterday? Uh, but he wasn't a, playing right. I don't know. It's strange. Kulu wasn't playing on the right. Where would you have played him, Sam? Sam, where would you have played him? Sorry. Oh, it had, well, I mean, it would have had to be right wing, right? I mean, if you brought in Solanke. But he's not hes not a right wing in this in, in Andrew's system. He's not that tricky winger that needs to that needs to advance. Did, wouldn't you suggest that his best his best his best position is actually further into the centre? Long term. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't I, I I wouldn't mind him playing him instead of or alongside Madison, but if if the other option is starting Brandon Johnson on the right, I would rather have one of us playing on the right. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not me. <laughs> uh, you don't I'm want me playing on the right. <laughs> I'm, I'm conflicted about Kudu My wages in, well. instead of Madison because um, I think Kuduzewski has everything to play instead of Madison. I think he's a better footballer, but when he has had the opportunity to play in that position. I don't feel he's been particularly good in the matches where he did play that position. I don't know whether that's because he needs to have like a run of matches with that um, number 10 position yeah. um, or whether actually yeah. that's, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I mean, you know, child, I'm going kind of in your direction, which is, yeah. If, if he's going to play somewhere, I wouldn't mind seeing him instead of Madison because he's. I don't, I don't, one, I don't want to attack few... Madison, dude. But, sorry. Yeah. I don't want to attack Madison because I know how good he is. Yeah. But he doesn't How good strike can me. Be, I think as... it's a statement you really want to be making there. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't because I don't. He is obviously a very very talented player. I can imagine him at all the big teams, but for some reason, he is very lukewarm right now. Just the, everything I see of him, all the everything. There's no. Maybe this is speaks deeper to a club mentality, club philosophy, but. Just wish he would just be more drilled at what he's doing. Like he just seems like he's wayward. He's also a bit weak. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I, 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 like last night, he got like knocked off the ball and like went down for a foul that we was never going to be given in a million years. Yeah. At least three times, and that gives a turnover. Like in you know, and it's really frustrating. Uh, he got I thought three. he was okay in the first half. Oh, I thought he was good. I thought I thought good, but... him I thought him and Son on the left last night were very good for like 50 or 60 minutes in the first half, you know, Leicester were really struggling. I mean, them two along with the doggy that was really working well down the left and that's where we were creating most of the opportunities. Yeah. And that was in big contrast to the right-hand sides where we had Saar Nothing. and Johnson where basically the ball would go out to them no, they can't dribble past their player, so then the ball will come back through the defenders, around to the other side, around to the left again. So I, I know M Madison has been very poor basically the whole of the second half of last season. Um, but I thought he was okay 
up until about the time that Leicester scored yesterday, and then the whole team basically collapsed. So I, I wouldn't necessarily put that on Madison, but and I, don't I, think I agree. We needs to rediscover his form from. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we recovered as a team until the substitutions came in. Yeah, when the subs came in, we had young the players come in. Injury. Yeah, uh, did anybody have a good view of that? Because from what I saw, no. he went up for a header and came down unconscious. No, so, he hit the ground. He hit the ground. Like his yeah. head hit the ground first. Yeah, but he, he went out cold. I yeah, yeah. like he jumped he and landed. Down. He was and unconscious he, he was before he cold. before he came down. I mean, no, I he, he, it's when he, it's when his, his head hit the floor. He, 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 he hit he, like he hit the ground like that, and yeah. so it was a. It looked like he knocked out. From what from what I saw, he didn't he didn't try to stop himself falling, which tells me no. he was unconscious before he hit the ground. I think you've seen seen the same gif as me, um, Jif. Or GIF, I don't know. GIF. Mm -hmm. oh, let's go for GIF. I think you've yeah. seen the same um, photo that moves as I've seen. <laughs> um, and it re it looked really quite worrying because he fell like a tree, actually. Yeah. yeah. He didn't put his hands out or anything. Um, well, hopefully he is. I mean, I imagine he won't be available for Everton, but hopefully he does get back soon because I thought he was one of the more positive players last night, especially mm -hmm. in the first half. I thought mm -hmm. he was... I mean, he really helped us sort of dominate midfield yeah. at the start of the game. So hopefully he's back soon. So because I he mean, was taken off... Do we going to be back for Everton or is he still sort of suspended by the no, club? No, he was suspended for one game. Over. Yeah, suspension's over. It depends now whether the Premier League come in and decide to make something of it. Um, but uh, Benton Kerr was taken off with a, as a concussion sub, which means he's out for the next game. Absolutely. Can't play that time. Can't yeah. play within that. But he's got. I think he's got to spend at least a week out. Um, and that makes it too short for the Everton game. Um, and after, and after the no more playing in Leicester for Benton Kern. Okay? Yeah, please, never <laughs> again. from playing in Leicester. I also Just... don't want to. I don't want a, a repeat of the Vertonghen thing, where um, you know, he yeah. seemed to play in almost an entire season concussed in his last season with us, and it was just when I found out about that, I was quite angry. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ange is quite good about that. I can remember in the very first game last season, I can't remember who it was that went off. Was it maybe Romero that went off Romero. injured against yeah. Brentford? Mm -hmm. And he just took him off straight away, even though Romero just jumped up and ran off. So it seems like Ange is quite sensible mm -hmm. when it comes to head injuries. Which I think comes back to something I said last season. It's so good to have an adult in charge because there is no way that Mourinho or Conte would have said, oh, God, yeah. get out there and show us what you can do. You know, Easy Harry Redknapp, man. like... Harry Redknapp, like, what, there's a famous quote where he says, uh, who was it, Pierce? Uh, the ref, the uh, physio says to me, he doesn't know who he is. Oh, tell him he's Pele and send him out. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. That sounds like Harry, what something Harry Redknapp would say. That was a Harry Redknapp. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so, absolutely amazing. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think having an adult in charge is a really good thing. It, kind of does bite us a little bit because he's not one who's going to get into spats about referees or you know potentially risk players which I'm I'm definitely not against he shouldn't be risking players and their health when they've got injuries like this and there is no way he could have carried on the guy was spark out on the floor mm. so um, mm. and I thought it was a good time to make the subs as well and bringing Gray on who I thought did very well when he came in he knitted play together nicely played a few good balls um, and seems to almost built up a partnership with uh, Bergval already, which is nice to see. Great, great. Gray's a funny one because I thought he was outstanding as a central defender and mm -hmm. a right back in pre-season. And then every time he played six, I thought he was absolutely terrible and way out of his depth. But yeah, he came in yesterday and he did okay. I think it helped the fact that Leicester by that point had basically dropped off and were just playing on the, on the break again. But yeah, it's... I'm not sure what I think of Gray yet. I mean, there's obviously a lot of talent there, but I'm not sure where he's going to be getting game time for us this season. Yeah, because I, I thought Bergvall was was really good. Yeah, I thought Gray. I, I, I'm 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 hearing lots of people saying he was really good, and I'm sort of going, oh well, okay, if you say so. Um, but I didn't really see it. I thought he was okay, but I didn't didn't see a, a you know. But it's always difficult with that position, you know. Um, but I didn't. I thought he was okay. So do you think Bergval is very good and should be starting ahead of Madison? Or do you just think he's very good and promising for the future? I think he can keep coming on and and like if he carries on like that and then after about 10, 15 games, the question has to be asked. 
I think mm. he's going to come in and push Pat Matasal for a spot. Yeah, I, I was going to say that, okay. actually. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to me to be the number 10 position that he is necessarily mm. gravitating towards. He yeah. seems to be an all-action midfielder. Box to box, will pop up with a goal. The goal was that Pat, Pat, who was, let's be fair, I mean, fairly anonymous, you know, yesterday. Yeah. Um, he had a, he had a couple I, of moments, but overall, it was not his best game. No. The thing is, Pape Sarr is, is a good sort of transition player, isn't he? So, like, when we're playing against teams that are going to have a lot of possession and where we're going to need to, you know, play on the break, mm. I think he's very good because you give him the ball and he can just carry it and run and run and run. But when we're playing against a team like Leicester that we're just sitting back and hoofing the ball out and weren't actually trying to play football at all, that kind of nullifies him. And that's where I think we we need more creativity in midfield. So that's where you could start to question, you know, should we move Kulusevsky centrally? Should we have Bergvall or someone else who's a bit more attack-minded attack coming into that sort of eight position to play alongside Madison? I think there's a, I think there's a very good chance that Bergvall is a starter by Christmas. Yeah. The way he looks yeah. as a player. He's he's so good on the ball. So, I mean, I mean, he's got I like, he's got a... That, dude. It's yeah, it could well be. Like, yeah, it's in the next few weeks, weeks if not a month. But he's got a lovely yeah. little feint to him where he just yeah. jinks past the player, and you're like, "Well, wow, you don't see that very often with players." Um, I, I believe it's called pauser, is the technical term. Um, but he makes time and space for himself with with nice little mm -hmm. movements, and he's got a lovely eye for a pass as well, and it's really good weight on his pass. So. I think I think he's the the natural. I mean, we say replacement. He left like three seasons ago, but Christian Eriksen was Christian probably the Eriksen. most comparable yeah. player we've got for Bergvall. And the goals that he popped up with, I've not seen him score those since you know since he's left us. So you know, if, if Bergvall had a couple of great chances over preseason, I think he hit the he hit the bar at one point. So he gets in those positions. He's not afraid to shoot, which you know it seems like a lot of our a lot of our players are. So I think that if he does pop up with a goal or two, that's going to be the telling thing. Really, when we've got players like Saar, Bentinker, and Madison, who are relatively goal shy. And what did everybody think of the Vicario Bergvall flashpoint? I think that was just a well, flash in the not... pan and move on. No. Or... That's, that's I'm not going to do it again. Try... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goalkeeper. I, I don't have a problem with it, honestly. Like, I mean, if he's if he's good enough to play, he's old enough to get abuse when he does something very stupid which is what he did then which is to lose the ball in a very dangerous area mm -hmm. i mean it's not his fault that i think poro was injured at that time right so that, that's yeah. why he sort of came back to cover it right back because poro couldn't couldn't run. run anymore but walk it was it was a dangerous place to lose the ball and he'll learn his lesson and probably the next time he'll he'll boot it out yeah, and he was I given was a bit, a bit of over a... the top from Picario, but i don't have an issue with it and he was given a hospital pass that was a terrible pass to give the youngster yeah, 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 he had absolutely no way to go. That's so, my thing. He was given a really bad pass, and he was given no options to pass to. And it's like, oh, yeah. get yourself out of that. And one of the things that I like about Postecoglou, well, there are many things I like, but one of the many things I like about him is he said in the past, you know, if a player's trying to play my kind of football and makes a mistake, then I'll, you know, I will take it as a learning experience. And I kind of thought that Vicario's reaction to it went against that kind of statement because I thought that Vicario overreacted to that and I felt that it wasn't actually going to work in our best interests to slam a player who was trying to do the right thing. Yeah, it went wrong. I don't think you can read too much into it, honestly. They're on the football yeah, pitch. They're footballers. Mm -hmm. They get all keyed up. Um, I mean, you know, you must have played football with players like that. I have. Guys that are just like moaning at you the entire time from the beginning of mm -hmm. to the end of the match. Although I deserved it because I was shit, but yeah, you know. Um, but they, there's always one with a big mouth that's always given it. I, I don't oh, yeah. see anything wrong with this. I think that ultimately, if people are shouting at each other, it shows that they've got passion. They're they're playing on the edge of their emotions, which I think is only a good thing. We're talking about like leaders and stuff. Leaders always have like a brimming emotion underneath them and an ability to let it let it go at any point that's why people take them seriously because they don't want that kind of stuff you know uh exploding on them um I, I if anything i need to see more emotion in the team i need to see more of that i need to see more people holding each other to a, uh, accountable mm -hmm. um and that would show me that that, that, that maybe we, yeah we don't need that necessarily central figure who I think is Romero, but he's just waiting. I don't know what he's waiting on to get get the armband or whatever, uh, get moved to number six. 
Um, so, um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew it was oh, coming. We <laughs> well, now, now Skippy's gone. The, the now Skippy, there's a spot. The yeah. <laughs> you oh, can't play like Dragonson playing in the Euros and not be sat there going, what the hell's going on here? This is bullshit. Yeah, true. Um, on another note, has anybody seen Odebert play? Uh, I think we all did when he played us last year. Uh, I have to say, when his name was mentioned, I had to look him up. I had to do a Danny Rose and go, who is this yeah. guy? Um, but then, like, when you actually see his highlights and you think back to that game, he's like, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, he did show up quite well. Um, he looks to be a pretty good player, uh, but it's going to be one of those things where it's, uh, I'll take it on faith from the management. They like him, and so we'll go from there. I, I, I remember that game, and... The one thing I remember was thinking, who's this guy? Mm. <laughs> he, he he was dangerous. Uh, Burnley a shite, and he showed up in there. So, yeah, hopefully he relegates uh, Brendan Johnson to the bench. Because uh, it's yeah, going to come down to character. Anybody, they think, will be I... a better, better fit at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got so, his work permit now. So he, he can at least be out there and uh, have a chance. See. But we've had a we've had like a bit of a, a sort of history with uh, tricky French wingers, haven't we? Yeah, you know, like uh, that, that have... define tricky, tricky to support. Well, tricky. You know, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about David Ginola or um, you know, and no one else comes to mind right now. But there was a couple of guys back Is in Brennan you know, maybe some sort of... French. No, <laughs> he's also not tricky. Steve, you're thinking of. of and Kudu. Kudu. and GA and in Kudu. Kudu. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Kudu. Um, yeah. Oh, he's Cameroonian. No, he's not. He's not there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, what about Steed? <laughs> Steed. <laughs> Steed. He was proven, though, wasn't he? Steed was proven. Tripod. Yeah, no, it, it is a worry to me that these players come in and they and they they see the canteen. It's a nice canteen, and everyone's sort of really well taken care of. And you know, it's nice. It's a nice hotel next to the, the training ground, and you know, it's everything's comfortable. It's heated seats in the changing room and stuff, and it's just like. This is great. I'm on a five-year contract. I can kick back. It's my general gripe with the club is that everything seems a little bit cushy right now and there's no real need to like, you know, if it's a little bit cold, they'll go into the indoor, you know, the indoor uh, football training bit because it's, you know, spitting wet rain outside. Uh, it worries me that Tottenham have this, like there's a cushiness to it. Like it's a nice, you know, sort of, you know, turned down bed with a mint on it. It just annoys me how <laughs> many bits of footage I have to watch on YouTube with people bouncing ping pong balls into cups and shit. We're a football team. And, you know, and, and that character that we're missing, I think, is is taken away from us with all this, I don't, want to, I don't want to call it woke or anything, but like, it's just like a... Nicey, nicey. Somebody, somebody with me on this. I mean, it's, what, what am I trying to say? It's just... It's bit not too a friendly, a bit too football. nice. It's not a re- it's not a football retreat. We're a football club. We need we need paint peeling off the walls in the changing room. <laughs> Nobody wants to go outside. Coaches kicking them out there. You know, mud or I don't know. Like Maybe it's just be, an, I, I'm, I'm getting coachier. annoyed about it. Yeah, I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting a little bit annoyed about it. I mean, even people like Mourinho and Conte would turn up and they would go, you know, it's got the best stadium in the world. It's got the best uh, training facilities in the world. And they stuck, they stuck around for no- That meant nothing after a year. Nothing at all. You know, it's, and, and, and in many ways, what Conte said about, you know, that we're just a bit soft. I I don't think we play into our, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how, I don't know what the remedy is, to be honest, though. I feel like we're going down this sort of very sort of brandy sort of club that needs to be doing the right things all the time instead of playing, you know, with hearts and sleeves. But that's just my, my rant for the day. I think I think it's the modern thing with football. I mean, you you see Man City and they do exactly the same kind of stuff. They had uh, even their managers getting involved with uh, you know, quizzes and things like that on their social media. It's, it's just modern day football, sadly. Um, quickly talking about Conte, anybody else see him uh, absolutely explode <laughs> at Napoli? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, very... I, one of my mates is, is a Napoli fan. And and when I, and I texted him as soon as I saw that Conte was going there, and I said yeah. I just said to him like, mate, I'm I'm sorry. But give I'm it really six months. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, he's, he's um, kicking can off I, can already. I, can, I, can I ask you guys one last question on on our squad if we, if we've still got a few minutes? 
Yeah, of course. No. Uh, so I, I put in the chat the list of our nine subs from yesterday. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering who is going to drop off the match lists once everyone is fit, because you can see that there are nine players there, right? So there's Austin, goalkeeper. We've got three defenders. We've got Ben Davis, Spence and Dragashin. And then mm-hmm. the rest of the midfielders are attackers. So Bergvall, Gray, Kulisewski, Werner, Richarlison. Now, Bissouma is going to come back in and probably will start most games, I would imagine. Yeah. And we've just gone out and signed Oderberg, who's another guy that's going to come in. So who's who's missing out? Does that mean Timo. presumably Werner is at risk here yeah. in that so, list? Werner's got to be Werner at risk. So is Richarlison. And then maybe we sacrifice... And and I would imagine, well, I mean, I think Richarlison, when he's fit, is going to be the first sub to come on, I would imagine. Or one of well, the first. Hang on a minute. On. I, Wait, I imagine we sacrifice the defender, maybe. Maybe we sacrifice Spence because Ray can cover right back. Who are we saying who's got to come back in? We, you said um, the so, young so Bissouma. kid. Bissouma, yeah. 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 So Odebert. Bissouma and the guy that we just signed. I can't imagine if we just signed the guy... I so can't Vanna's, imagine him not dro- the match will drop, Yeah, so Vanna will have to drop out for the for the new guy. Mm-hmm. For Odeber. Yeah. Um, and then for Bissouma? For Bissouma. Does Spence drop out? Well, I think Bissouma... Spence, yeah, I think Spence no, Bissouma, is the likely Bissouma one. Bissouma and Gray will be fighting for that spot on the subs bench. You, th- you think so? I think Bissouma's going to be starting. I don't. I th- Well, no, actually... He will while I think Benton, either Bissouma while or Benton Benton could mending his head, he'll be he'll be starting. But I think Yeah, yeah, but that's what yeah, that's why my question is like when everyone's fit, obviously mm-hmm. next week, right, Ben is gonna be out, Bissouma's gonna be in, so that's mm-hmm. fine. But I'm just saying yeah. when everyone's fit, that all of a sudden there's a lot of competition just to make the bench. Because we're mm-hmm. not even talking about La Celso or Solomon here or Lancashire or Michael we've got a lot of players. Paul though. O'Keefe said we wanted to get rid of Bissouma all summer. Uh, he also said Davis was at risk. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, right I, I thought it would be interesting because there are a lot of players still yeah. there. I still think there's going to be a, a. I think I still think we've got a signing up up our sleeve that that's going to blow us all away. I I think the way that they've they've conducted uh, uh, business over this, uh, this 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 window has been great because to be honest, I'm sick of the sick of the constant gossip and you know now that you can't trust the gossip mm. because Odeberg, we wake up and Odeberg signed nobody heard any, knew, any, yeah. knew anything about that he was obviously you know that if we couldn't have got due or we couldn't have got whoever else we we're going for you know netto then he was going to be the, the next one so we didn't hear anything of that so we don't really know kind of what's what's going to happen we never know the Celso really should be out the door. He he should get game time. If he's playing for Argentina, somebody's got to want him on their team. If Argentina rates him, why isn't he? Why is he happy Weird, to just it? warm the bench? It's such a strange, strange, yeah. strange thing. And so, if you release that that one that that one position, and you and you do have potential that we could, you know, and Basuma goes, I'll be happy to say, you know, Basuma's just he's like the Madison version of them. You know, Madison version at six. He's great on his day. Um, but can you trust him? Like he's doing, no. he's doing whipp- I, I, whippers. I thought like, Bissouma was one of YouTube. our best players in preseason. I really thought he was very good. I, I didn't see much of preseason. I don't lend much credence to what happens in preseason, really, because yeah, it's just, fair enough. you know, then he's really let himself down. And before he joined us, he's he, so he was in stupid, trouble. though. Yes, it's so, in it's it's so he dumb. Us. He's got it, a discipline it, problem. What are, you, what are you thinking? Like, if you're making those decisions on social media, what decisions are you making on the park? Like, I can forgive Ben Tukur, it's cultural, it, it was in bad taste and everything like that. And he's genuinely, like, when he gets up to speed, he's a, he's a very consistent player until injuries come. But Basuma, you are, I'm concerned that, that you know, I don't give a shit that he did it, but it's just the fact that he is our number six and he is our, you know, our, it's supposed to be our Rodri or our Declan Rice or whatever. Don't forget and the he, reason why we got him on the cheap. Yeah. Uh, why was he was running out of contract, wasn't it? No, it wasn't it? No, was... There was a there was there were yes. serious allegations around. Very him. serious allegations. Oh yeah, there were some allegations out of France, but they they turned out to be false by the sound of it. So yeah. Yeah, but I, no, I think no, he's no, no smoke without fire. 
he's the sort of geezer that gets himself into trouble you know makes stupid decisions he yeah he, he was like that before he joined us i mean and come on he's a footballer all footballers do stupid things but i but i agree like filming yourself doing something illegal is pretty stupid but at least do it without filming yourself i will say about number six is this is the player we want to install this season for next season you know so he does get up to speed is that going to be basuma you know is he going to take the next level is, is he going to step up that's why i i know you say that archie gray is in the great number six you know, he's not great at turning the ball and all this stuff. He's better with, with with play in front of him. But for me personally, I would rather see him grow into that role, if that's the role he's going to be in, uh, with someone like a Benton Kerr um, in that sixth role. I don't want somebody who we're not going to have next season. I can see us keeping Benton Kerr and Gray. I, I if, if, if Basuma's peaked, if he's apexed, then why, are we, what, why is he our number six this season? I don't think he will be. I think it's. And he's going to get sold. Basuma has a yeah. skill set that I don't see it any, anywhere else in the club having. Um, but yeah. at the same time, if we can't rely on him to actually perform and not do absolutely mindless things, then you kind of got to say, yeah, you're going to have to go, buddy. And we're going to have to replace him either with what we got in the squad or what we can find elsewhere. And there's not a huge number of sixes on the market. Um, but then I didn't think there were a huge number of number nines on the market or a huge number of right wingers. And Langer and the team found some players who apparently are good enough. Langer. Langer. <laughs> Sam, who would you have I think number up until six? Christmas. I think up until Christmas, Basuma will play most of our games. I imagine Gray will start in the Europa League or maybe yeah. in the in the, the League Cup. Cup yeah. And then after Christmas, it'll depend on how everyone's playing and how, you know, if Ben Tankur comes back from his injury and what state he's in. But I think short term, I don't see anyone else apart from Bissouma starting most of our games. And so that means Ben Tankur starts at eight. I mean, Ben Tankur is injured. We don't know how long he's going to be out for, right? We yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just I, I love Ben Tankur and I would almost against, against weaker teams, I would rather start Ben Tankur as six than than Bissouma because it just gives us a bit more creativity in midfield and his long range passing is better than Bissouma's. Mm -hmm. Against tougher opposition, I can understand why Bissouma would mm -hmm. be starting. It just comes back to that thing like if we want to be, uh, uh, if we want to have that leadership, that trifecta between the central defenders and the number six is where that leadership really sort of, uh, I think is the, is, is, is the seat of the soul in the, in, 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 in the team. And if we aren't sure of our number six or if he's a, a long-term sort of social media hazard, then I don't see why we would continue with someone like Basuma. It just seems like we're shooting ourselves in the foot long-term. I just really hope that they've addressed that issue. I do have a bit of an issue with Benton Kerr and, you know, I think the actions over the summer really were not clever. I mean, he got involved in two, two issues, um, either of which, frankly, could see him struggle to retain his place in the club. And... Yeah. I'm kind of thinking, why has Bissouma been treated so swiftly and yet we're still kind of waiting to see what happens with Bentancur? Because I just don't see how those two things... I don't see how they've been measured the same. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you on that, Stuart. Time, I, I think, it's, time, it's, it's, I think it's timing's strange. part of it because... So we've had yeah. half the summer yeah. to forget about the Benton Core thing. Um, I think the Benton Core Sunny thing is just, I, I, I don't want to minimize anything. Well, actually, yeah, I do. It's a nothing burger. Yeah. It yeah. really is. It really is nothing. It wouldn't yeah. have been a problem. It's bad, but it was poor taste. It, yeah, was, it was, you know, with the stupid. room, but like at the end of the day, I mean, I can just I, see maturity in Benton Kerr moving forward. I can't hmm. see it in Basuma. I can't see him picking up and going with it. Um, I, I just think picking up two so, glass bottles and throwing them into a crowd is is not a good look. That was done. That, that, that was in South done. America. I mean, come on. <laughs> not, a, well, we are we on the postcode roll here or zip code as you would call it? <laughs> I thought it was a cup full of ice and it wasn't a glass bottle. No, two glass bottles. One of whom hit his own physio and cut his head open. So, yeah. Uh, Good, good oh, shot. Yeah. <laughs> so, so physio is giving him some practice. The physio, yeah. the physio was in the crowd attacking the Colombian. So <laughs> it's like, amazing. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Physio, it's heal great. thyself. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that. It's like it's like with Dyer marching into the crowd. I'm like, 
good on you. Get up there. Go on, take it. You know, I know it's it's not professional, but the Premier League is about drama. They 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 love that kind of stuff. Like there's, it's just attracts more attention to the to to the whole thing. And mm -hmm. I don't think we're squeaky. I don't think we're beyond being squeaky clean. I mean, look at Zinedine Zidane, the best player ever to play in midfield. In the you know extra time in the World Cup final, decides to <laughs> headbutt headbutt somebody. You know, in the chest, not even the nose. It's the most iconic thing in, in football ever. I remember seeing it, just thinking, "Wow, none it's of like us something are Street Fighter." Yeah. Oh, absolutely. None of us are beyond reproach here. Right? <laughs> let's not let's not pretend we're all squeaky clean. I'd rather see someone's human side. That's why I love Cutie so much. I think he's great, and it's why I think Deli Ali was given way too much stick for being Deli Ali, and it's probably you know ultimately kind of probably what you know con con conspired to bring him down, amongst other things, of course, but. Mm, yeah, I think it's the other things that maybe got it caused, caused the big issues. Um, but yeah, there's there's a sadness around Deli Ali. I think that a lot of Spurs fans feel. I kind of wish he'd still with us. I think he'd be he'd be rather good in this system. A uh, Deli Ali at the top yeah. of his game, anyway. Yeah, there we go. That is yeah. very sad. Okay, we so we David. are we are slowly losing numbers because we've lost A, we've lost Ash, and now we've lost David. So it might be a good time to end things. Um, we've been going for over an hour. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Sam, you need to come back another time. And uh, well done on getting the audio ready. Charlie, thank you very much for your time. And uh, we will be back on Sunday, hopefully live. Uh, I'll be back home with the proper setup and everything ready to go. So there should be no issues then. Uh, but until then, thank you, everyone. And come on, you Spurs. Mine's best. Bye. Take care, guys.